You are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. Oh my, my. Oh my, my. We're rolling. We're rolling, baby. You know what? We're always trying to overcome something. And that's a good thing. Life, in my mind, just wouldn't be worth it if we weren't. It'd be too easy. And it won't mean the same if it's too easy. And I guess that's one of the reasons why I love, I love bodybuilding. And I love the fact that I'm so addicted to that. I'm addicted to that idea of it being difficult, hard. It just, it just wouldn't be the same if it wasn't. It wouldn't mean enough. I heard somebody say one time, is a, it's another example, even like with food, the difference between you going out and getting fast food and preparing it yourself, there's a, it's a, different, a different appreciation for that. Going out and getting fast food is just too easy. You don't really appreciate that. But when you're preparing your food, putting love into that, I can, it gives it a whole different meaning. So I'd say that is similar. But I got to tell you something for you serious growthers that are out there, you young serious growthers, as well as the silver backers. Just get used to making it hard. It's just got to be that way. You know, today, every once in a while, I go into the gym. And I was thinking about something. It, I like doing math. I'm not that good at it, but I like doing math sometimes. It gives me a... a a different perspective and a, and a reference, I guess. One day I, I decided to do math as to how many repetitions I've done over the, I did it a while back, but the idea was to, how many repetitions I had done maybe over 30 years at that point. I think I probably did this 10 years ago. And of course I'm now in it 40 years. So the number up I'm going to refer to you is probably, well, it's not probably, it's going to be higher. But I thought, how many reps have I done over 40 years? It's, it's astounding. It's, it's daunting to think about that. I mean, I'm going to tell you without knowing the exact number, we're talking about millions of repetitions, millions of repetitions. And then to take that a step further, I think about all the time that I've taken off in the 40 years. And I can tell you, I've taken about 40 weeks, even when I was competing, you know, especially at the end of a a pre-competition preparation, you know, you, I mean, you really put your body through, it wears you out, you're exhausted, you really have pushed all uh, systems to the brink. And even then, I thought, oh, it's going to be so nice to take a couple weeks off or 10 days off. Shit, I couldn't do that. I mean, if I, got, I did three or four days. Even like when I was when I had my strokes 10 years ago, I didn't, I mean, I, I obviously I was in the hospital, but within a week I was back at it to some degree. When I, when for me, getting that addicted to something is amazing. It's truly amazing. It gives me life. Bodybuilding and and training is, there's no question about it. It's my religion. There's no doubt about that. I do it day in and day out. It's something that is ongoing, always learning, enthusiastically learning about what the mind and body is capable of. It's not just about how your body ends up turning out. It's not that. It's more about what your mind is able to, the brain, what it's able to uh, to overcome, to take. That's amazing for me to discover. And, to, and 40 years, you know, being into this thing, I'm still discovering. It's like learning something new. It's like a new toy for me. It's exciting. And all this in the face of suffering. 
because suffering is the main thing that you have to deal with on a regular basis. You have to be willing to suffer and learn how to embrace that. It's a beautiful thing. All right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you about our product. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief and the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Anyway, it was just something that first came to mind. You know, this morning, I got to share with you, uh, first of all, everything that I, I talk about in my podcast is normally based on firsthand uh, experience, something that I've done over and over again, because I want to be able to talk about it with great knowledge and great experience. So knowing and doing yourself, putting yourself through those paces on every level of of you know anything that has to do with changing mind and body there's a lot to do and a lot to learn but my my goal my passion is to do that still to this day and every i'll tell you every once in a while so you can you can rest assured that anything that i'm talking about here with you is not just something that i'm in i theorize it's something that I've applied. I've done application to make damn sure I know that what the result or the non-result that I'm getting is based on some facts. But I got to tell you, you know, every once in a while I go into the gym. And this happened to me when I was in my, when I first started in my 30s training. And it's happened along the way. It still happens. And it happens every once in a great while. And it happened to me this morning. And just to put a little, I always like to, you know, just put a, some context to this. I'm 67 years of age. And I'm somebody who had strokes 10 years ago that paralyzed me. I'm not saying that to boast. I'm just saying that because it's a fact. And when I came back to the gym and started working out with uh with weights again because after i had my strokes I, i've told the story I, I did come back too soon and i had a third one but i still worked out body through space type stuff really ultra light uh dumbbells uh, i never got away from it from that but when i came back and started saying okay I, there's been some time now this past and again we've all got stuff that we're overcoming i guess that's my point is when I started coming back again, I was so amazed at how set back I was. I mean, by no, just my own nature, I'm a above average person in strength. And I always was very proud of the fact that I was strong as hell in the gym. Not only mentally, but physically, I was pretty darn strong. And again, you know, the strength aspect of this as a bodybuilder, it really doesn't matter. But, you know, my ego has to know that I'm strong. That's just what I have to know about myself. But I also do know that as it relates to putting on muscle, it's not really that important. But I still got to know. Today, I come into the gym. And when I first started coming back, my bench press, just to give you an idea, I could barely do the bar for maybe one or two reps. I mean, it was shocking. Can you imagine when you're someone who's, I used to start on the bench press in my, you know, forties and fifties. I mean, 315 was my first set that I did to come back. And all of a sudden I can only do the bar. Wow. That was a mind fuck to say the least, but you know, it's kind of like, 
I remember the I talk about the first time I went to Gold's Gym to find out what these guys really looked like. I was six years into training, and back then we didn't have uh, social uh, the internet, so we can find out exactly or what was going on, more or less in the industry. We read magazines, and you know, magazines is just an extension, I think, to some degree of social media. So not always what you read in the magazine is factual. I know that to be true especially when I got down there, but I'll never forget that time when I walked in and, uh, to goals gym, it, the first thing that I said, when I saw those mass monsters was, and I'm again, I'm six years into this. I'd already competed and I thought, hell no, there's no freaking way that I can make my body look like that. That was my first response. And I have to tell you, I was, I was defeated uh, at that point, that moment in time, I was defeated. I was deflated because I didn't realize how far and how much more I had to improve to look like the guys that I was looking in these magazines. I just couldn't believe it to the point. And I hate to admit this because it's like almost a quitter that moment when I said, hell no. I drove, you know, two and a half, three hours to go see what Gold's Gym inside looked like. I was, I came to the door. I was there maybe 10 minutes because I was in shock. And I said, hell no. I got in my car and drove back to my home gym with my tail between my legs. I had to let that moment set. You know, I mean, where do you go from the point where it's like, oh, hell no, you've got, you've already made up your mind. That was my response. No way. Where do I go from there? Do I quit? Do I just lift weights? Just to have a good time and maybe just get in a different kind of condition. Is that what I do? I had a moment of truth there. I mean, look, it's not life or death. Let's, let's be honest. But when you're someone who is aspiring to be something, take your physique to a place where is it extraordinary? And all of a sudden to be, to be faced and left with that. You know, I, I have a, an athletic background and my athletic background and my mindset kicked in for me because it wasn't too long where I just said, you know what? If I don't do this, then I, I for sure have quit and I for sure will never aspire to that. That's for damn sure. And I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to stay in the game. And I'm glad that I did. Because several years later, I went back to Gold's Gym, which cut into the chase here. During the days of Platts, cost of Platts were working out together, Gold's Gym. I belong there. I did. I really felt that just as much as I felt like I didn't belong there several years before I belonged, but I still wasn't there, but I belonged my crowning moment. I'm going to get back to this only doing the bar, by the way, get off on these damn tangents, but my crowning moment, you know, I, I competed all over the world. I was lucky that way. I was very fortunate. I did seminars all over the world with Platts on my own I got people that actually brought me in to come just do posing seminars. Amazing. I think I did that one in Sweden, but my crowning moment was the day that I did a photo shoot in gold's gym in the Mecca. Hey, back then in those days in the, in the late eighties, uh, I mean, early eighties and, 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 um, and into the nineties, the atmosphere was, it was really different back then. It really was, you know, sometimes kind of like music. Sometimes we say, well, the best music was during the times that we were coming through like rock and roll. But in this case, that golden era that during that time, that was really something that I don't think can be uh, duplicated. And yet I think at some point it's bound to, but it was something that was, unique 
a lot of camaraderie, a lot to be intimidated by. But to be able to do a photo shoot at Gold's Gym, Mecca, and be the main event, so to speak. I mean, people, it was like all the pros were there. I was doing a photo shoot with the number one photographer at that time, Artie Zeller. Artie Zeller. He was the go-to photographer back then. He was doing a photo shoot of me. There was no competition. There was no seminar. There was nothing that I did winning any kind of a trophy or cre creating that kind of achievement than that one at Gold's Gym. So back to my point of only able to do the bar. I had that same moment. Oh, hell no. For me to get back? Hell no. Shocking. I mean, what, what a trauma like that, like a stroke will do to your body. It is phenomenal. But again, I, I have an athletic mindset and it just took a little bit of time before I thought, you know what, if I don't try, I will for sure not make any more progress and I'll have a disappointing recovery. That's for sure. What's my other option to give it a go? I will say this. I'm lucky because I did have the, you know, I started athletics when I was eight years of age. Immediately when you get into athletics, your life lessons start being built, developing, you know, daily rituals. So I was very lucky about having that, fortunate. And then to have bodybuilding, because for those of you who are out there that, that are bodybuilding you know how damn long it takes and like i said you know 40 years and 40 million reps i mean it takes a long time but i was addicted that addiction you know so many times an addiction can be negative but this addiction it was exactly the opposite this addiction that i had for the love of sport bodybuilding this addiction of taking myself on my own accord no one had to lead me into the gym to put myself through pain no one had to do that i did it i, I love training with with trainers i i have uh, training partners i'll tell you i've trained with plats i really enjoyed that but i wanted to do it to myself it was a win-win and just like when, when I was paralyzed, but when I, my body started moving, I knew at that point that it was up to me. It's always up to us. It's always up to you. Unless you're like completely out of it. But it is. It's really up to you. It's not up to anybody else. So there I am doing the bar bill. One to two reps. Big whoop. I tell a long story sometimes, but you know what? This morning, and again, this is leading up to over the last 10 years, I've been doing this barbell bench press on a consistent basis because one of my goals was to get back to where I was lifting what I would say a, a significant amount of weight. I mean, just respectable at least. And that's 225 pounds. I think for, you know, somebody who is my, uh, my size and I'm not, I'm different age and I mean, right now I'm weighing 218. So that's not, I'm not like 150 or anything like that. But 225 stuck in my head. This morning when I came to the gym, I did 185 pounds, four sets, four reps. You know, for some of you that are out there, you're going to go, well, you know, big whoop. It, it was big whoop. And I got to tell you, I was stronger today than I have been in the last 10 years. Something happened today. I don't know what it is. I can't predict it. In fact, I thought 
I had a, a dream actually last night that I got in trouble doing a bench press. In fact, when the, when I did it today, I made sure that I went through the process of, hey, in case something happens here where I can't make it, this is how you take this weight off me. So, you, I don't, you know, you don't know. I have been increasing for the most part. But, you know, ever since I've had the, the stroke, there's far or few between repetitions that, that I do that actually feel like 100% like it did in the old days. Today was one of them. I'll be a motherfucker if today wasn't one of them. I could have done more sets. I could have done more reps, but I didn't. You know, sometimes you just got to leave a little bit in the, in the tank. It, it's going to happen again for me. I know that. And I got to tell you something. I know that 225 is just, it's just around the corner. And that corner, I got to tell you also, that corner could be way around the corner, the way this stuff works. You know, it's, it's uh, human nature to, we want to get results fast. And it's even worse now in, in our, our environment with social media. The shiny object syndrome is out there, and it is brutal. Want it now. Want it now. I need some results now, now, now. Hey, I, I look, I'm, I'm like the next guy. Um, I want results. I do. But it takes time to develop true strength, true muscle. It takes a lot of damn time. So I'm lucky that way. I'm so lucky in so many ways. That was one of the things I want to talk about was that damn bench press today. Shit, it felt so normal. It felt so good. I was so powerful. Unbelievable. I got to be careful. I'm not, uh, I'm not 41, not even 50. But I'll tell you what, I didn't know that I could do, I would be able to do this at 67 and my body's responding. Wow. Stay in the game, people. Just stay in the game. There'll be so many setbacks and there'll be so many changes that you have to go through to stay in the game. That's part of it. Okay, let's move on to, to something else. Um, I spoke about it earlier on here about as it relates to building muscle, the most important thing is that you do volume. But you know what? In order for you to be able to do more volume, you have to be stronger. So it's a, it's a tricky balance. And I've talked about how you could do uh, volume training by doing lower reps. So the lower the reps that you do, the stronger that you're going to get. Now, we know that getting stronger is not the very best way to add muscle. But as it relates to a tool, you're getting stronger as it relates to that tool to allow you and for you to create a better quality of endurance to be able to do more endurance, you need to do low rep training, but it still has to be focused around endurance. I've mentioned before, if I do six sets of uh, 10 sets of six on a lat pull down, that's pretty low rep training, but my repetitions are 60. And again, that's the most, still the most important thing to me, but when I do enough of those six, 10, 10 sets of six, I can even go lower. But at the end of those sets, that has to, it has to add up to a lot of volume that you're doing. So there's different ways to skin that cat. I mean, you could also say that just by simply doing higher repetitions as a, as a general rule of thumb, that will also increase your abil ability to uh, create muscle endurance and muscle recovery, but, and it also will help with your weight training. All I'm suggesting is that you take advantage of every tool that's out there in the shed to be as efficient as you possibly can for the purposes of putting on muscle. So keep that in mind for those of you that are training out there, you know, have a reason for what you're, 
what you're doing at all times. Don't just be moving your body mind, mindlessly through space. Have a reason. <clears throat> Ask yourself why. You're going to school every day. It, and I'm really just uh, really talking to those people that are, are in it to the degree that I'm in it. I'm in this thing I'm so much. It's like sometimes I just really have to back off. You know, I was supposed to go to Italy. and uh, Actually, I was supposed to be there already. I was going to leave on the 16th of June. And I got to tell you something. I'm so into this working out. This has always happened to me, by the way. I've been of this. Um, I've always had this um, mindset when it comes to getting out of my regiment, my routine, because that's what this is really all about that I'm talking about. Here I have an opportunity to go to Italy for a few days. And all I can think about is, is there a gym that's close by? Is the gym, do they have enough equipment and the, the type of equipment that I want to use? That shit is on my mind to the point where it's like, I'd rather not go. I, I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing, but I'm sure how I think about that. I was relieved. I mean, I... I ended up just rescheduling that. So I'm going to have to deal with the again down the road. But when you get into the level I have, you know, my wife says, I'm boring. Well, maybe. But I don't think I am. I get up every damn day and I'm excited about going to the gym. I'm excited about going to the gym and putting myself through uh, a lot of suffering. I'm happy. It's not your everyday normal, what you would think that would make you happy, <laughs> but I'm happy. It's simple for me. Feel good, train. And that regimen, that regimen is so important to me. To the point where I just, you know, change is difficult. Even changing my damn time to come into the gym is very difficult. On the weekend, I don't have to come in. I don't have to come in. I don't have to come in at all on the weekend, but I do. But for me to sleep an extra hour, it's almost not worth it. It messes up with my, my regimen. You know, and, and the thing is, is you got to be flexible. I understand that. But that doesn't make me happy. And yes, change is always difficult. And I tolerate that shit. I will tell you that uh, I am going to go to Italy. I'm going to tolerate that shit. But it's, I don't want to do that. The regimen, the daily habit, the lifestyle ritual, that stuff makes me happy. Blows my mind. Another thing I want to talk about, I was when I was doing my cardio on the weekend, just a couple of days ago, a doctor came on one of the news uh, channels, and every once in a while they talk about diet. And this gal, this doctor, I have to tell you, most doctors don't are not coherent about how to explain a keto or a high fat diet. They're just not. They don't have enough in the trenches training, so they they broad stroke it and they they just give general terms <clears throat> but this this lady even this lady who i thought did a remarkable job and i know that she only has so much time you know being on air i got that but there's just some things that i haven't heard from anyone about the high fat the keto diet because they're talking about the going on a high fat diet and the benefits and the difference between a high fat diet and a Mediterranean diet. The reason why I can talk about this in great details, because back in, I don't know, maybe the nineties, I wrote a book called the anabolic diet with Mauro Di Pasquale, Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale. He's like the father of the, besides Vince Gironda. I mean, Mauro takes the high fat diet to the next level for sure. And it's one of those diets that you would say, compared to a glucose diet, we have two different metabolisms. 
a free fatty acid metabolism and a glucose metabolism. They're just two different operating systems in the body. One utilizes uh, sugar as its main source of energy. The other one uses fat. It, it takes fat and breaks it down to free fatty acids, and it uses that free fatty acids. It produces, you know, over time, in three days, when you go to this free fatty acid diet, the high fat diet, your metabolism switches. It goes from a glucose, 95% of the people that are out there, maybe it's changed a bit because of keto is now kind of sexy word. It's a high fat diet, folks. So maybe there's a higher degree of people, but 95% of the people are on a glucose type of diet, even though some of the diets like the, like the, the Mediterranean diet, it's a carbohydrate based diet that has that actually you eat a higher level of fat in your diet. And they talk about good fats, and all that. But one of the things that makes the high fat diet more user friendly is knowing and understanding how your physiology response to the high fat diet. And generally speaking, the difference between a glucose diet and a high fat diet or the amount of carbs that you're taking in on a daily basis, it's got to be 30 grams. It can be less, it can be slightly higher, but I would say to be safe 30 grams a day. And here's the stuff that I'm not hearing from people that are out there explaining the keto or the like this doctor, and I think she knew a lot. So I'm not bag bagging on her. But it's like no one's talking about how when you lower your carbohydrate intake for three days in a row, that your body at the end of three days will, will start switching and switches its metabolism from glucose to free fatty acid. Your body is now burning fat as energy. And I don't hear that. I've never heard anybody state anybody say that. It takes three days. That's significant because it's part of understanding exactly how you can eat more carbohydrates in your diet. And that's where it's always, that's been like the, the, the block and the obstacle for a lot of people is because the thought of, and I'll tell you, I'm one of those people, the thought of me going on a high fat or 30 grams of carbohydrates a day for a long period of time would get old. I mean, they make more foods now compared to when I first started back with when I was writing the working on that project with Morrow. There was no, I mean, there were, you were limited. So I understand that, you know, to go on a diet like that and to make it something that you do for a long period of time, that in that scenario is hard to do. But when you understand that, you can you can actually manipulate your body in a way in a high fat diet that you can still have carbohydrates keep in mind it takes three days for your body to switch between metabolisms whether it be from high fat to glucose or vice versa it takes three days there's a certain way you got to do that it's got to be three days so, so let's think about this. You can cycle carbohydrates for two days for sure without converting your metabolism back over to a glucose diet. I mean, two days out of five or seven, okay, that's not a lot of, uh, a lot of days that you can have carbohydrates, but it's a hell of a lot better than not being able to have them at all for long periods of time or having them at low low uh you know low carbohydrate intake i never hear anyone talk about that how you can do that so really if you wanted to every three days you could cycle on and off the carbohydrate and high fat diet because here's what happens or here's what doesn't happen when you go from a high fat diet and the way that i set up my program back then because on a weekend typically i did more i was more lax uh, more potentially more uh, socializing on the weekend, which really applied more for somebody who wanted to have a diet and still be able to go out and socialize. I've never done a lot of socializing to begin with, but for that person. 
it made her more user friendly. But think about this when you Monday through Friday, when you go on Saturday and Sunday and you start eating all the carbohydrates that you want to the point where as long as you're not going over your caloric intake, if you're watching your weight or whatever, but you can eat whatever carbohydrate that you want on the weekends. What I would do is I wouldn't worry about protein intake. I would cut my protein intake to nil five grams or it just didn't matter. But what I did eat was a lot of carbohydrate and all kinds of them, carbs and fat. And what I learned about, about carbs and fat, when I first started doing that carb loading on the weekend, I just remember how I was, it, it would take me on, it would spike my, my glucose levels and then i crash from that that's real real normal real common with people that are just doing a glucose type of diet they eat a lot of carbs spikes their energy and then they crash from that a couple hours later and that was happening with me on the weekend i was loving on one hand i was loving eating every carbohydrate in sight and there was nothing off the table just that alone for two days just, I mean, that helped me with the other five days when I went back to the high fat. But here's what I learned. Two things. Number one, in two days, even though that I'm eating all kinds of carbohydrates, my metabolism hasn't switched over. I'm still in free fatty acid metabolism. I'm still operating with my body as burning fat as its first and main energy source. And I have this, this luxury of cramming all kinds of carbs down my throat. Now, if I would have gone three days or more, that's when I changed the body to go back to glucose. That, that, that defeats the whole purpose when you do that. And a lot of people don't understand that. Now, the second thing that I, I learned was how to use the fat macro over the weekend that I'm telling you about. Cause I just like, when I would crash, I look, I would be eating in those days, I was eating Monday through Friday when I was doing the high fat diet, I was eating about 2,500 calories per day. Saturday and Sunday, I would eat 10,000 calories on Saturday, 10, up to and up to 10,000 calories on Sunday, 20,000 calories in two days. Now I did that for a reason, not just, because of the fact that I wanted to eat that much and I enjoyed doing that, but it had more to do with driving my body on in those two days, putting it under into fight or flight. That's a lot of calories to take in in two days. And it puts temporary stress on your autonomic nervous system. But that was the point. It was to drive your body into fight or flight because when it does that, guess what? what? Your body secretes growth hormone. Bang, bingo. For a bodybuilder, knowing that that's going to secrete growth hormone, are you kidding me? You want me to eat 14,000 calories a day for a couple of days? That's going to secrete more growth hormone? I'll do it. So there was a reason for doing that. That's a natural way of making your body produce more growth hormone. It has bodybuilding um, benefits. We all know that it's been in the game of of uh, bodybuilding but here's what i learned because it was i'm telling you that crashing you know because i i do just like most people do when they're eating the, the glucose diets i would crash but i would crash at a bigger level because i was eating so many calories when i started adding fat to my carb load game changer why is that well i learned that fat controls sugar it's a beautiful thing fat is not very metabolically active but it does control sugar. What does that mean in layman? It means that it slows down the release of the sugar that goes into your system. Whereas before, when I was just, just concentrating on just eating carbohydrates, forget fat, because I, I was on a high-fat diet, I didn't want to be near fat at that, at that point. But I realized that when I started carb loading, I, I, I would carb load maybe two-thirds of my intake was carbohydrates in the in the uh, other third was fat, fat, slowing the release of that carbohydrate totally stopped me from crashing. 
it evened out the energy. So that was another thing that I had learned. This is the stuff I don't hear anyone talking about. I think it's because there's no one out there that's really had the kind of firsthand uh, experience with it like I have, A. Morrow was a guy who, for he, he understood this. Okay, I'm not the only guy that knows this, but I'm one of the only guys based on what I'm not hearing as it relates to the uh, high fat diet, then you can see well where I can cycle carbs. It can be any, any two days, by the way, as long as it's two days um, together. Can't split that up and really get the, the, the necessary effect. So you could do it like Monday, Tuesday, carb load, and then the other five days would be the high fat diet. That's how you use that. So the, the point is this, there are, it's, it's more uh, flexible than anyone really understands. Again, from what I've heard and seen, nobody really gets that. And I will tell you this, it, when you're on a, a glucose diet, this is as it relates to the fat macro. Keep in mind, you can still, you know, you, you need to understand and learn how to use the macros as tools. They're really important tools that you can use. Macros, understanding how, for example, understanding the macros, I was able to reverse heart disease. Check that out. That's how powerful the macros are. But for those of you that are, are having issues with your, your energy levels, you're crashing and you're in a, in a glucose metabolism, add fat to your diet. This is where the Mediterranean diet is real beneficial because it has a higher level of, of fat intake to begin with and you're still in glucose um, metabolism anyway that was what i wanted to talk about today and you guys that are out there you serious growthers you young serious growthers and you uh silverbackers i hope you get to the point where i'm at i'm lucky I'm lucky. I'm lucky. 67 years of age. And I, I just, I'm so enthusiastic about getting up in the morning to go to the gym to put myself in. Thanks health. for listening to the serious growth podcast. That, for more episodes, like the one you just listened Until to next time, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast serious. app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at seriousgrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.